So he's fully yes. committed to this. Yeah. He's like, the only way I can understand what it means to be alive is to have the greatest possible conflict. I need someone who really wants to kill me yeah. really, really bad and is trying as hard as I can and is skilled enough to do it. Then I fight for my life. Then I understand what life is. That's crazy. Only then. That's crazy. So What's up? Welcome back to the State of the Arc podcast. My name is Mike. My name's Kason. We're back here to finish our analysis of ending A for near Automata. We mm. actually made it through ending A this time. Well, I did. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, so a couple of things I want to say before starting, actually, this week. For next time, I have a suspicion, and I'm probably wrong because I'm wrong every time I have this suspicion, that we can do most of, if not all, of B playthrough. Yeah in one episode because mm. it is a lot of repeating the same areas, same bosses. There's going to be similar dialogue and new content mm. or, or, or I should say new like perspective, perspective yeah. on what happens right. through the lens of nine S this time. But there is a lot of like going kind of through the same areas and seeing a lot of the same stuff. So, but I do believe that next time will be when I will at least talk a lot more about uh, the philosophers like Simone, Simone de Beauvoir oh, and, yeah. uh, and others and get into some of the books that I'm reading a little bit more. Nice. So um, that'll probably take up most of what I'll have to say next time. But there's only like really two different points, beginning and end of playthrough B, that it diverges from 2B's. Hmm. Uh, a playthrough. So there's not going to be that much plot summary happening next time is what I'm thinking. Okay. So playthrough plot B through ending B for next week. Um, that, that would be where I'd say play up to next time. Also, uh, I haven't actually announced this yet in any formal way, but we have other platforms that we upload content to now. <laughs> so uh, if you don't follow us on Twitter, for instance, Right. Um, I was basically like updating people about my playthrough of Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn, which mm. I finished last week. So I'm going to be doing a video on that coming nice. up pretty soon. Uh, but, you know, you could have been following and interacting with me there. Also, we have an Instagram and a TikTok now. So if you want to check those out, I'm going to be trying to do something a little bit different on those. Not mm. just like uploading the same shorts that go in other elsewhere. places that just like announce, hey, we've got a video up now. Right. But I'll actually make, I think, some short videos hmm. like saying, hey, I just got to this part and this was really cool or whatever. Like yeah. as I'm hmm. doing a playthrough of something, kind of like updates like that. So that's um, what I'm hoping to do there. So if you want to like get more updates on like when we're actually playing through something or when, you know, a little bit more behind the scenes while I'm preparing for this stuff that we do on the podcast or for videos in the future, uh, go check those out. Just resonant arc, Instagram, TikTok, uh, Facebook, Twitter. You'd find us the same way with all of them. So, uh, okay. My first Great. note for this week is back in the machine village. I wish, I wish my first note and I hate myself. <laughs> I hate myself a lot. I don't know if you knew that about me. My first note says, why are Adam and Eve like this? Are they choosing to be? Question mark. Mm. I did not give myself any context as about to what, what, that what means. exactly <laughs> I was referring to. <laughs> Anyways, um, yeah, were Adam and Eve choosing to be like that? <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing. All right, machine, uh, machine village. It is maybe maybe it was in reference to. Well, there's, there's somebody who made a comment. And I'm trying to remember what it was on just the last episode we put up about Adam and Eve and oh, yeah. whether or not they were, oh, is this the first time that the machine network has created like a set of leaders in all mm, this time? Right. Uh, and like, if so, why? Um, and, and After thousands of years. Yeah. 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 And, and I guess it's been, like you said, I think it was centuries since the aliens were. Something like that, yeah. Uh, killed off. But. Um, is this really the first time that they've sort of tried to create like a, like a set of like leaders to like be the ones that like drive their evolution or mm. protect it or whatever. 
Um, it's a good question. Yeah. And they why were, uh, why now versus not like an earlier time, or is it part of some kind of cycle? Or their something? evolution, right? Part of yeah, the yeah. way that they're all adapting. So. They were scattered, divided, and leaderless. Yes, right. And, so. and of course, now <laughs> now they got a leader. So good job. So maybe it had something to do. Are they choosing to be this way? That's yeah. what my brain came up with when was the question that was asked on the on the nice. podcast last week. I I don't really know the answer to that, but. Fair enough. We'll uh, discover that a little bit more in B playthrough, I suppose. I guess so. All right. Yeah. Machine Village. So I wrote here, as you enter the forest area, the machine tells, uh, one machine tells another to get back this instant, and the other runs away, calling the other a dummy. So this is the little kid <laughs> robot right. and the mother, and he like runs away from home, and it's a little yeah. side quest. Did you do this one? Oh, I can't remember actually doing it. I believe I did. It's been a couple weeks. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> since we talked and since right. I played, um, is this is the one that says, "Oh no, my child ran away. Go, go, yeah, go rescue them. It's like dangerous." Something like yeah, that. and then you find him out, kind of uh, in like sort of the main first uh, open area where it, it, that connects to it, it, what is it called? They call it the, the city. Or yeah, the, yeah. the ruined city, I think, ruined area. City, yeah, right. um, you find him in there, and it's like, hey, you got to listen to your mom. Your mom loves you. Like, stop yeah, being, yeah. like, stupid. <laughs> and he's like, no, I hate my mom. And, <laughs> and like, you convince he's him robots, to come back man. because he's scared. You know, he, what's he going to do? Yeah, like, yeah. So, you know, you bring him back to the village, and the mom's like, thank you so much, and whatever. So it's just kind of a short little thing. But it's, it's a, another demonstration of the fact that they're – going even further in sort of emulating human yeah. behavior and, and family structures and trying to be human. They're trying to become human, right? Yeah. And they're getting better and better at, like, simulating or, or emulating that. Um, so let's see here. Uh, oh, and remember that our goal um, at the moment is to find out as much from Pascal as we can. Yes. And that was like, that's a directive. Yeah. Like that was um, straight from straight from the top the bunker. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I wrote some of the dialogue related to this. Uh, so this machine mother has a child, mm. a, eh? it's surprising <laughs> to see them form familial familial units like that. I wonder yeah. if they'll let us examine their brain circuits. If we bring the kid home, um, and to be says your scientific curiosity is getting out of hand nine S Joking, joking, mostly. But Joke what I found show. fascinating about this was this was just off the back. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Of Adam and Eve yeah. suggesting the same thing about dissecting human beings. Right. And not to, thinking like, anything of yeah, it. Yeah, to like learn more about them, yeah. to study them, to understand what it means to be a human. Right. And that was disgusting and absolutely insane yeah, repulsive. to 9s yeah. the the I, I remember writing down is like this, this guy is like it's what is wrong with these yeah, people this is, is wrong so messed yeah. up but then literally it seems well the the time scale of the game can be a little deceptive it's it's yeah, it I'm seems like a short time afterwards but it could yeah. be you know in sort of that abstracted way right. it could be days later weeks later whatever yeah. but it seems shortly off the back of that experience of reacting so strongly to the idea of dissecting humans like that. Right. He suggests dissecting a machine yeah. in the same way and doesn't think a thing of it. And it's crazy. Whatever. Like, oh, I'm mostly joking. <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> now, I mean, obviously, we know exactly what he's talking about. Yes. Like, I would totally dissect a robot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it's so it's also funny coming off the heels of Adam and Eve, but also coming off the heels of of rescuing a, the son of a mother who was worried about yes. her kid, you yes. know? And yes. just like your first thought is like, ooh, I want to open them up and kill them and see what circuits <laughs> do what. And like, all right, that's fine. Yeah. But it's like, it's multiple things. It's starting to add up. Yeah. It's clever. And, and it's Very also clever. kind of subtle. It's just almost like yeah. uh, in passing while you're just going into the machine village again uh, for yeah. your main objective, right? It's just kind of something you see while you're passing through. Um. So you get to Pascal, and you can yeah. ask him several questions here. That's right, yeah. If you ask him about the aliens, he doesn't really know much. They haven't mm. received any messages from them in a long time. He says, I guess you could say that the, the fact that they never gave us any orders anymore is also a reason why we quit fighting. Mm. Um, and then if you ask Pascal about why they choose not to fight, he says they've been alive for 500 years, and he's lost countless friends, but that's not what scares him. 
He says, what scares me is the fact that I've grown used to seeing those I care about die all around me. Yeah. Which was pretty profound. I was very profound, especially as a um, video game player yeah. who builds connections to characters who uh, die <laughs> one yeah. way or the other. Yeah. It's very interesting. So it's it's getting used to it, like yeah. not caring Just as being much desensitized. to see that happen, being desensitized to that. Yeah. So then if you ask Pascal if there are any machines uh, other than themselves who are cut off from the network, he says that the opera lady boss that we fought oh, earlier yeah. was one that was probably not. But then there's also this whole forest kingdom yeah. of machines that are not on the network as well. And they're trying to build a nation and they're hostile to all outsiders. Right. So that That's ends up being fascinating. <laughs> where Tubi and 9S d decide to go next to investigate is this forest kingdom. Yeah. Um, What's really interesting is because it's not exactly clear how these robots developed sen mm -hmm. sentience, but Pascal's line here, I think it's a little bit, it's revealing in some ways when he says he hated that he had gotten so used to his friends dying all around him. It's almost like the robot got upset that it didn't care. Yes. And that's what caused it to start to care, yes. right? So the robot is inherently not programmed to like have an emotional response, but the fact that they didn't have an emotional response while being inundated with the information of humans who were all about emotional responses to everything mm. made them assume that they should have an emotional response. And that was kind of the beginning of the whole thing where it's like, wait, why do I not care that everyone is dying? And it slowly turns into starting to care, like developing an emotion that that maybe didn't exist or was not previously programmed in. Yeah. So that gives us a little bit of insight, just that sentence, into possibly how these robots were able to kind of evolve and gain some sort of like emotional capacity. Right. It, I don't know that it makes sense like physically, <laughs> but like at the very least, they were sick of not feeling anything. And, yeah. It's like, oh, as we study this ancient civilization of people that we yeah. were meant to wipe out, it's actually weird that we are how we are. Yeah. Uh, I, I, this is more interesting or more fascinating or seems more Clearly. right as a way to sure. be a, an essence to have yeah. versus the essence I currently have. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. um, so then we get some more dialogue between 9S and 2B. Uh, hey, 2B, when do you think you'll be willing to call me nines? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting more bold. <laughs> she says 9S is just fine. Um, so they, they go on uh, into this old shopping center. Uh, this was really cool. I really liked this because they're fighting and um, one of the machine heads yeah, just comes yeah. off, right? And starts like rolling down. <laughs> and then um, I'm, I'm not going to say the name yeah, yeah. of uh, this character because um, there are people here who have not played uh, Near Replicant, uh, yeah. the first game. And I recommend you do that. But um, this is a character from the yeah. first game that pops out and rolls around and starts talking to you. And it's just a really it's perfect, charming, yeah. little charming interaction. <laughs> uh, this thing's weird to be, let's kill it. <laughs> let's kill it. And it's, <laughs> it's like just trying to talk to us and yeah. tell us like, Oh, whoa, you know, wh what's been going on? Where have I been this whole time? And you're like, let's kill it. Like, it's so <laughs> funny. It's so funny and heartless and careless. Yeah. Um, also this, um, head, is yeah. basically Yoko Taro's the presence, mask right? Yeah, that he wears. It's yeah. the mask that he wears. Yep. So and I so love that. he gets scared and rolls off. Just no! rolls away. No. <laughs> but what's really funny, and what I found like like super hilarious about this, is that this character sets up like a shop that you find around the world. Have you seen this? I so, don't like, know that I've gone there yet. You, you'll hear music playing to, to, to signal that he's nearby, and like it's just a little like wagon or truck or whatever yeah and you, you'll stop it and he'll just he's a vendor that'll just sell you items and things That's great. <laughs> he just opens a shop and just <laughs> drives around like selling stuff which is i don't know it's just perfect That's uh, if you've played the first game and you know who this character is again we'll hold off on that for now yeah um there were th okay this is probably something i should respond to because there was uh, a oh, sentiment. a ton of people. A, a lot of us. people were saying yes. this. And so. Uh, That's right. There's a couple of things that need to be reiterated and then explained about this. Yeah. So if you haven't watched our podcast before, um, when we're doing something, a, a game that is a direct sequel, this isn't necessarily a direct sequel, but a mm. game that relies on information or has connections to another game in the series, right? right um, what we will usually do is 
in the final episode or towards the end after yeah, the all the spoilers are one or two out of the way, yeah. then we'll kind of talk about that. Yeah. So, and we'll give sufficient warning. Uh, we'll say, yeah. hey, we're going to talk about Nier now, um, Nier Replicant, and then anybody who hasn't played it can can drop off. But right. without sufficient warning, we won't talk about it. But I, I kind of agree, especially after playing more of this game. It would be very interesting to just discuss the similarities and right. some of the connections and right. what things mean and how things are represented yes. differently um, and maybe certain improvements between the games for sure um, later on. But we will be doing that at the end of the whole podcast, yeah. this whole uh, series. Yeah. So that's usually how we handle it. And um, yeah. but I, I also want to emphasize because there were some people saying things like it's essential, like it's 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 essential that you talk about these things. That I don't necessarily agree with because. Because some people bring it up, like if you do Mass Effect Two, like are you going to like not talk about anything in Mass yeah, Effect One? That's, that's not the same thing. Not even, clo- not even close. <laughs> like, uh, you know, you don't go watch the Two Towers and have any clue what's going on, if or, or be expected yeah, yeah. to, as a filmmaker, be able to clue people in on what's going on without them seeing the first movie. You had to have seen the first movie. Right. It makes no sense to watch Part Two if you haven't seen Part One. Right. That that's not how this is. Right. Like you can play near Automata and thematically like have a rich experience and understand yeah. it to the level at which you, well, you yeah. need to without having played yeah. near replicant. Yoko Taro designed the game this way on purpose. Yes. Right. So yes. that you don't have to rely on the yes. previous, you know, right. entry. So I don't think it's essential that we do it, especially but, now, but, but we, we will, will do it. <laughs> <laughs> because right? it's cool. Yes. Because it would be very very interesting yes. for everybody, I think. So, uh, don't worry about that. We are going to get around to that. Um, so yeah, we'll, we'll talk about, uh, this character a little bit more, why they're here (laughs) and how they're here and what role this character plays now in this world Mm -hmm. after that one at another time. Um, so uh, my next note is in the forest kingdom. Um, Have you died yet in the game? (laughs) I don't think so. (laughs) (laughs) So I have, um, but... I did. Um, there's some messages, the little messages that appear at when, oh, yes. when you actually die. Yes, like, yes, yes, yes. This is kind of the like, on, is it players online? Or something I don't like that. know about that. I don't know where it comes from, actually. I don't I, know. I'm trying to remember because it's been so long since I died. I don't even remember. This message says a nameless android vowed to grow as a person at the bunker looking at Earth. Oh, that's not, that's definitely that's not, just a, a message. that's not a message from player. Yeah, I don't think so, no <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I don't know what these messages mean, but you get like this little, little vignette, um, when you die and then you come back and you can change it. There's different ones. I, I think later on in my playthrough, I've got a different one. There um, is, but it's very interesting. Kind of a similar thing to say the souls games though, right? Where the place you died has, what is it? I don't know if it's money or experience. Oh, or parts, and you go back to gear, recover items. Yeah. You have to go back and pick it up again before that's it dies, right. We didn't cover that. It goes away. Yeah. Yeah. So that's but if you die again on your way, then it's just gone. Then it's gone. It forever. won't track multiple deaths. Right. Yeah. Right. But the idea is that your body is just there. Yeah. You, you go and you can see your previous body. Right. You just look at it and like, well, in fact, that's a lifeless thing. I haven't even tried this because again, I haven't died in this playthrough, but I, I've, I've heard that there's a way to get your previous body to get up and like actually help you fight for a while. Ooh. And then like once you're done in that area, it kind of just dissolves and goes away. Interesting. But I've never seen that. So I don't know. But that's kind of cool. If I'm I'm, I, I'm not aware of that. <laughs> yeah. At the moment, I think people in the in the chat will be able to correct me on that if I'm wrong. But that's that's mm-hmm. what I've heard, which I think is kind of cool. So yeah, it's like your 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 first body will just sort of resurrect and just for a limited amount of time, sort of help you fight whatever it was. Like, like an amiibo. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Uh, uh, let's see, Bill Bro Baggins. I love that name, Bill Bro Baggins. Bill Bro. You actually have to recover your installed chips and such. Yeah, the right. chips, which is like your your yeah. whole progression system. Yeah, so you, you kind of need to. Yeah, right. Uh, Returnal takes this idea. So Returnal, I don't know if you've heard of it. It's a it's like a roguelike game, mm-hmm. PS5 exclusive, no, no. where it has a similar concept. Mm-hmm. Uh, it takes this idea and does something crazy with it. If you guys have played it. Um, I have not, but I do intend to play that game someday. Um, if you manage to get close to the body, uh, mix, 
uh, and interact with it, the following options will appear. Retrieve yeah, I remember is the recommended this. choice. Repair, this action will enable the body to follow the new character for some time and help in combat. So you, you choose to retrieve your stuff. Yeah, but I never did that. Repair. I don't know why you would. <laughs> You'd want to pick up your stuff, I would think, in most cases. Oh, absolutely, but yeah. Anyway, and it says for some time. Well, how long is some time, right? Yeah, yeah it's, it's, very it's cool, not though. that long, but uh, maybe if you're really struggling against an enemy and you just want a little bit of help, someone yeah, else dealing yeah, yeah. some extra damage to That's kill That's right, thing. if your body, if you if your character just keeps dying over and over yeah. and over, it's like, hey... And you don't even have anything to recover anyways because you've died <laughs> twice, you've died maybe. So times. Maybe then it would make sense yeah, that's possible. to revive yeah. or repair instead, but... Anyway, uh, into the forest kingdom here. Um, I wrote, the machines you fight here are nationalistic. Fight for your king, they say. It's always about for the king, for our country, right. for, our, for our kingdom. Yeah. You know, uh, to, I think 9S says, what's with these guys? <laughs> or, or no, that's to be. And then 9S says, don't listen to what they're saying to be. So he's still sort of refusing. Right. <laughs> He's refusing what's right in front of his face. Yeah, it's like so obvious now. Like there, it's... there was um before on the way to this place, you kind of pass through a, um, a canyon, and there's a machine. Uh, right, there's a machine there that says, or you know, it's kind of we kind of surprise him, and he goes, "Oh, you must be here to kill me." Well, I only ask that you not make it too painful. <laughs> um, but then, uh, anyways, it's really funny. Um, I'm pretty sure this is the point. I didn't take a note on it, but I'm pretty sure this is the guy who he basically volunteers to kill himself. Oh, He's I like, remember oh, this. Am actually. I inconveniencing you? Oh, I'm sorry. Would it be better if I just killed myself? Uh, <laughs> let me see. Okay, and he just self destructs right then and there. Yeah, I remember that. Right I remember that. I can't remember if it was this one or a different one, but at some point, something like that happens. It's really funny, um, and I believe it's this one right here. Yeah, that. Yeah, there, there's a part of me that feels like there's something profound to read into that, but it's just it's not coming to me at the, in the moment. Yeah, but like there's there's something I feel like that's a just very Taroism. So ready to just end your own yeah, life. Yeah, like right? what? How is that? I'm gonna think about that a little bit more. That 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 means something more than just being a funny moment for sure. But um, yeah. Anyway, you're fighting against these machines here in the the kingdom, the forest kingdom. Um, oh, and then you also fight this giant robot. There's like a mini boss, but the words you hear from the mini boss are "kill me." Yeah, that's kill right. Me and you're just like fighting, and like that's what you're hearing. Mm. It's fighting against you, but it's telling you to kill it the yep. whole time. And then there's another machine here, a little bit later on, that loves animals. Yes, yeah, so I was. That's my okay. Next good, note. good, yep, perfect. The animal loving machine. Yeah. So you're you're fighting it, or he's fighting you, I guess, mm -hmm. and he's begging you to like spare his life and the life of his little boar, his pig. The boar, yeah. <laughs> and. uh uh, it tells you about how it saved it saved an animal, right? And now likes taking care of animals. So this yeah. this machine is sort of like separated from the others of the forest kingdom. He just does that his own sense. thing, yeah, where yeah. he like likes animals and just yeah. lives with the animals in peace. <laughs> and the animals seem to like him. Yeah. And uh, it's funny because as soon as we say, "Okay, I promise I won't," he's kind of like using his body to shield the boar, the animal, yeah. right? And like you can't. It's really fun, but as soon as you agree, like, "Hey, fine, I won't kill the animal," he just immediately drops his guard and yep. trusts you, like right that's away. All he cared it's just about. like, okay, so that was that was really interesting. Don't I like kill that my animals, man. That's all that matters to him. Um, yeah, so I like that. That was a nice moment. Yeah, uh, I wrote down some dialogue here. Watch out for hostile enemies to be. Roger that nines. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, wait, what did you just say? <laughs> Roger that, 9S. Wait, no, that's not what you said. You said nines, or at least something close to, like, cut the chatter and engage the enemy. So <laughs> she finally said it, but then she didn't want to admit that she said it. Right. This is this is the kind of banter they're having um, as you're, like, getting kind of into the castle area. Oh, up there. Making your way through that yeah. part. Um, and this is where the game actually sort of transitions to more of like a 2D platformer. They're yeah, really it's, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you're getting cool. more of that. Like uh, Castlevania. The, the first Nier did this a lot too, where it would sort of switch genres yeah. in different areas. And yep. I mean, as, as far a swing as like a text-based adventure <laughs> in yes. one place to yeah. like a isometric sort of like dungeon crawler. Uh, you know, maybe more like Diablo style game in one yeah. area. And then of course the, the shooter side stuff, the, the shooter, side scrolling yeah. stuff, uh, lots of inspirations. And so you, it, you don't get that quite as drastically in Automata, but it is there and yeah. it's done in this really subtle way where you almost don't notice it. It's like all of a sudden, right. like, whoa, wait a minute. 
this is Castlevania now. Yes, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. When did this happen? <laughs> <laughs> um, I love it. But it's it's well done. Uh, and it's it's pretty fun little dungeon. And and I think a really good way of breaking things up, keeping it interesting, right? Not just yeah. doing the same uh, gameplay over and over. That's again. what I really like about this game. Yeah. Um, there's a character named Masamune, who's yes. like a weapons kind of dealer. Yeah. Um, his master gathered the four black and four white weapons. So there's four black and four white. Uh, once again, we have the motif there. And then uh, he discovers that we have one of the legendary eight weapons mm -hmm. and says, oh, I, I'll wager that you would wield them for good, is what he says. <laughs> I like it because he doesn't really know who we are, but he's yeah. like, oh, you have one of the weapons. Oh, sure. And it's like, oh, great. I'll bet you you're going to do good stuff there. But he says, I'll wager that you'll wield them for good. And I'm going to call this Masamune's wager. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, you know? We'll see. We'll, we'll see. see we'll see right. if uh, Masamune's wager pays off in the end, <laughs> in the final analysis. <laughs> okay, so you kind of come to the end of this dungeon. They find a cradle with a little baby machine yeah. inside of it. And they ask, is this their king? And then another android just comes like flying down out of nowhere. Like and um, just Sephiroth. Kills it, almost <laughs> like Sephiroth. Yeah, it just impales it. Boom, right. with this long sword. Right yeah. there. And then Command calls in immediately and says, you need to kill this android. Um, she deserted us. She's destroyed multiple pursuit androids. Now kill her before she kills you. Mm. Now what's interesting is that this character does not attack you first. Mm, right. Yeah. You can run up around and just like whatever, and it'll just stand there and not yeah. attack you, which is, again, kind of a common thing in Yoko Taro games. This was true in the first near as well, near Replicant. Right. You'll come across an enemy and the expectation is, oh, that's an enemy. And you just go start whacking on mm -hmm. it. Whereas if you, if you stop for a second, you realize it's not hostile at all. Right. And this character does not attack first. Now, what I think is a clever way that they get around this idea, right, that, well, the game can't progress unless this character is attacked and a boss fight ensues, mm -hmm. but I don't want to, like, take the agency necessarily away from the player right. to choose to attack or not. 9S will initiate combat. I've noticed that. I've noticed that. Yes. yes. Yeah. So it's like, okay, we have to have the, the, the fight has to happen, right. but I'm not going to make the player attack first, right? Yeah. If this is a non-hostile enemy, but the secondary computer-controlled character and once, will attack yeah. first. And once the first punch is thrown, it's on. Then it's on. Then, right? it's on. then yeah. you got to fight. Um, what was so interesting about when this character kills this baby in a cradle, right? Yeah. 2B is kind of like, this is their king? Like, are you kidding me? Yeah, right. And then... Um, the sword goes through the robot and it, the sound design and kind of the weight w of the object itself within the game, it, it shows kind of a, ho a hollow shell, mm -hmm. right? That this robot, like the way the sword just kind of like, punk, like yeah. punctures through it. It's like, it didn't go through anything. Yeah. It just went through some metal, poked a hole in some, yep, like, like two hollow. sides of like a trash can basically. Yeah. yeah <laughs> right. And then she lifts it up like effortlessly as though it's just like hollow. It's just this empty light thing that doesn't even have anything in it. Yep. And then she like shakes it off and it bounces off as if it were just literally nothing more than an empty trash can. Yep. Um, and that, that's a way that the sound design and the way that the animators kind of chose to show the weight of the uh, object itself kind of contributes to the story a little bit yeah, it does in letting sure. you know like there's nothing here, yeah. <laughs> right? There's right. there's no substance to the uh, no, to 9s's credit <laughs> there's no <laughs> substance to the robot now they they behave how they behave right i don't know why they're doing it but this is just a reminder that this is literally just a sheet of metal yes and that's all it is and this is like the king of all the robots yep. of this like little kingdom it's hilarious that it was a baby first yes, of all right. in this cradle yes. but to worship the divine child that's not super unusual um and kings have often been like children, you know, who kind of grow up. Yeah. Now the robots don't grow up, whatever. Um, but the reminder that this is just a hollow, ch a hollow hunk of metal to kind of give you a little bit more of that dissonance because we're starting to feel a bit something about the robots. Yeah. We're starting to Pascal and his whole village. We're starting to realize there's more to them than we realize. And then this scene happens, and it's like, oh yeah, they're just literally completely hollow. Like yeah. there might be a chip in there or something, but they're just yeah. hollow pieces of metal. Yeah, like. Okay, throws you back. Yoko Taro just kind of <laughs> undercuts his own like presentation a little bit there, um, but in a meaningful way. It was really sure. good. Yeah, and again, we're going to talk a lot more about this Forest King character 
on the subsequent B place. Okay. Um, there's a lot more to talk about with the whole Forest Kingdom and this character and a whole lot of stuff. We just don't get that information yet. Cool. It's not going to come up until, uh, I think, playthrough B. But So we'll but, get around to it. And, and, and how, how it came that this baby was being <laughs> worshipped by the, yeah, right? the king. By what the, is going on here? Yeah, exactly. Right? It's, it's 9S that does a little bit more digging into the whys mm. and, of, of this stuff. 2B doesn't he really would. care Tubi's just there to complete the mission. She's like Snake Solid. <laughs> she acts on instinct, right? right? Uh, so we'll get a little bit more. And, and I kind of like this because I remember my first playthrough of Near Automata generally being a little bit annoyed by the B playthrough because it's like, wait, am I really like just doing all the same thing again? Am I fighting the same bosses again? Like, what the heck? But, um, you know, sometimes when you're, going through a story for the first time there are details you'll miss yeah right and and it Just takes naturally. a second watch or something like yeah. that to be like oh yeah yeah that's how this connects and so yeah with with you being able in in a playthrough to just get through the plot points like the major right. sort of set pieces now your brain has sort of like retained that Right. Now you're going through and getting like filling those things in with yeah. detail on the second playthrough through like and a it, different perspective. Yeah, and, and it really just builds on it in a way that I think uh, is good for retention. Like you, you, That's you, good. you sort of like uh, you take in more of the story this way mm. because it's like you're not only trying to take in okay, this is the forest kingdom and this is their king. Like, you, like, the, the, sort of like the more general points of the plot. Now you've got that. Now we're going to fill it in with detail on playthrough two, plot B, B playthrough. Yeah, um, I like that. I like so that. I think it yeah. really works That's structurally cool. as a way of like, you know, keep a, a way to help the player sort of right. keep it in mind and remember well, it. That way the player doesn't have to continually like pause and think about sure. things or, yeah. or you don't have to look up the name of every character because yeah. it's all garbled and it's like, don't worry about the name. Just, just play the game. Don't, don't yeah. let that inform your first yeah. a playthrough. Yeah. Right? right. Like y you can get to know some of that a little bit later on. We'll get into it. Yeah. Um, but it's really good um, to just experience something your first time through yes. as opposed to pausing over and over. Like and if we, it, yeah. if we ever were to review a movie, Yes. That we had never seen before. Yes. And did it the way that we do these movies that we have seen before, where it's like, pause, take note, pause, take note. That would ruin the it, entire it experience. It would totally suck. In fact, this was true, Even of, games, um, it's something, it was true of Jacob's Ladder, right? So Jacob's right, Ladder, that's right, I watched that's it right. for the first time. Yeah, me too. And that's, my first time it. watching it, I didn't sit there and pause and write down the yes. dialogue and stuff. I just watched the movie. Just just get the whole thing as a, as a cohesive unity. Right? Yeah. The whole thing. Exactly Instead right. of dissecting it before you've even experienced it, you're already dissecting it and killing it and, you know, <laughs> <laughs> like figuring out what's going on. Yeah. Like that's what Nietzsche said. No, no uh, what? Nothing has ever left uh, an analyst's hands alive something like that. oh like, yeah once you dig into something you have to kill it right but don't do it before <laughs> you've experienced it yeah you know? at least the first time yeah and so it wasn't until i had to watch the movie a second time to really yeah. understand it to pick up on all the stuff we then did in our analysis which may be coming out here pretty soon actually we, we got a pan's labyrinth and a, and a jacob's ladder yes they'll be coming out uh, soon. podcasts they'll be coming public soon yes so anyways it was exact. That was exactly right for me there too. Like I, I wasn't going to sit there and dissect the movie before I even seen no. it. No, it so, just doesn't feel right. But that's this game is almost set up structurally to where you can just do that naturally. Yeah. In uh, playthrough A and B, and it will point you to the places where yeah. you need to go. You don't need to do it yourself. Right. It, it's kind of cool. Now I now I'm on board with the whole B playthrough. Where the first time I was like, Yeah, uh, why? You know? Me too. Me too. It's a it's weird kind of concept annoying. at first, but now I like it yeah. a lot for that reason. So. Um, uh, after this fight is over, 9S asks, uh, this android character why she betrayed the androids. And her answer is command is the one that betrayed you. Yep. Command and then betrayed she you. jumps out the window. And they're like, oh, after her or whatever, but she's gone. They can't mm -hmm. find her. So then 9S immediately calls into command and asks why this character deserted. Did they say the name of this character? I'm only avoiding it. I wrote it down here. I I'm, wrote it too, just because I'm, just, I'm aware. Um, I'm I, just trying to remember if they actually said that name or not. I don't recall. I, I don't either. I could remember. So I'm trying to be careful. Maybe somebody else could. 
I don't think it matters that much, I, though. It's just a not. letter and a number. <laughs> right, like all the rest of them. Like all the rest of them. But uh, the only reason, uh, I don't know. I, okay, so Bill Brobaggins is saying, I Bill think Bro. they say it. And that was my memory, too. I, I didn't remember them think saying so. it, yeah. and which is why I think I wrote it here. So this is A2. The name of this unit is A2. So 9S A2. calls into command and asks why A2 deserted. And the commander says that that's classified. <laughs> yeah, you're not allowed to know that, so, but you have to kill this person. Yes, right. But we're not going to tell you why. It's You You just have to. And uh, you you get into some dicey territory. Now, we're already doing that with the robots. But when it comes time to kill one of your own, and you don't know why, and you're blindly following the orders mm -hmm. from command, I don't know. That's difficult. This would have been a good time for the game to go black and white. Mm, I feel like okay. during this specific fight yeah. with A2, I felt like if it had gone black and white there, it would have yeah. made a ton of sense to me. Mm. Versus like we said in last episode with for that big, boss with the big Goliath, Goliath enemy, yeah. which I still don't I mean. Uh, it's probably something like that. I just wish it was more consistent. Yes. It's probably something like, oh, you got to do this thing. It's a big thing. You know, no, you can't, you don't have time to look other places. You've got to only do the mission and right. that's it. And um, but that's probably why I just, it's just not consistently applied, which is what makes it a little confusing. Yeah. So, but the first thing 9S does, I really like this. After calling command and asking this and then being like, oh, it's classified, you don't get to know this. The first thing he does after the call's over is suggests going to Pascal to see if he knows anything. That's right. Like, so he, it's, this is classified. And it's not like a, oh, it's classified, I'm not supposed to know this. It's like, let's go ask Pascal if he knows, I want to know yes, <laughs> what's like, going on that's here. That's not, um... That's not a following orders yeah, that's not blindly kind of thing, right? So yeah. he's, he's interested. He wants to know, even though yeah. he's not supposed to know. Um, so they go speak with Pascal. He basically doesn't say anything. He doesn't seem to know anything. <laughs> yeah. Other than that A2 is dangerous, but that she has never visited their village before. Hmm. So I know that this they're android... they're kind of sitting ducks. Yeah, I know this android is uh, skilled... No. At killing, <laughs> has but has never tried <laughs> skill with a blade. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, but man. it has never it has never attacked us or even come anywhere near us. So yeah, I don't have to tell you. Um, so I wrote some dialogue here. Why are some machines so aggressive while others couldn't care less about us? Uh, I, that must have just been something they said while traveling around. That that is it. I think that was it, and it was just the question that some machines literally they are just staring blankly into space. Yeah, like some of them will just come and attack you. Others are like, hi, like they're, yeah. they're smoking weed or something. They're yeah, just, they're looking out into the stars and they're just like completely absent from the world. Yeah, um, and I think that's what that's what. Yeah, is so it's to. it's you know the the behavior of. The machines varies wildly kind of all around this open world. but um, And then I wrote down about the shop uh, for the character, but I don't know if you've seen that or not. I don't know. Uh, the character, the head. that. Oh, about, yeah. I didn't end up his, seeing it. His shop. I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, 2B, your timing is impeccable. Our android forces currently have a carrier deployed in the Pacific Ocean. Mm. It should be back here to resupply before long. I think this is... Uh, Anemone, who is saying this? Mm -hmm. um, the resistance is assisting with the mission, so I'd like to ask you to run a little guard duty. My next note is about the commander being a slave driver, uh, but it could be this could be. Something yeah, else. I think this is Anemone because she's okay, like, cool, I, gotcha. I want you to help us because you know, we had already touched on this a little bit last time. They send those rockets up into yeah, space yeah. to to give um, to resupply resupply the moon, the moon, and, and the bunker. Maybe the bunker, yeah, yeah, and so like basically. That's what their next mission is. They're going to run guard duty for these um, these missiles that they've got down at this the shoreline that they need to load onto a carrier and take somewhere else. Hmm. Um, all the machine activity lately, uh, with all the machine activity lately, we need to stay on our toes. Of course, if you're already working on something for your high, I don't mind if that takes priority. So you head down oh, then to... Oh, this is definitely an enemy. <laughs> yeah, you head down to the flooded city. Yeah, which by the way... Anemone, I did not know this. Oh, the damn! Our, what it our means. comment section is really good. Yep. If you don't mind spoilers, or if you have played the game before, hit up that comment section, and we have some really thoughtful. Yeah. Like I say this every about every game. Yep. But our comment section is fire. It's really good, <laughs> and there are some like there's some beasts and really smart people in in the yep. comments. People who have played this game a hundred times, you know. But anemone is the name of a flower. Yes. I did not know that. Yes. I just knew the 
the sea anemone. Right. So there is also an above sea anemone, and um, this character um, can easily be named after the flower, not just the underwater right. uh, plant. And so that's again, without good to note. too much spoilering Flowers of are other things <laughs> in other games of this series, uh, flower the flower motif is a pretty common yes. thing. So. You know, there's another thing since we're talking about it. Th- this has been um, brought up two times. The fact that the idea of the aliens having been something like plants themselves, uh, right? Yeah. The either having the intelligence of well, the plants or what, the abilities. That's what uh, Adam, Adam and, says. Yeah, Adam right? says that. Yeah. But there's another point where, and it's after you fight the tank at the amusement park. Uh, mm. You recover oh, like a core. I didn't do that. You yeah. recover a core. Yeah. And um, I think it's 9S says like this, this looks like, you know, this looks like a plant matter basically mm. like this is so strange right so now we see then we see the aliens of course and the aliens um are basically plant-like beings themselves and um the idea of flowers and plants i think is gonna come into things a little come bit later but i figured i'd bring that up now yeah it's a good idea okay so the flooded city yeah um really it's cool some this yeah city is a sweet really cool area yeah um, I don't know dialogue. how long it's been flooded, but a city would not last that long. If it was underwater. <laughs> yeah, underwater. <laughs> so this must have been a very recent flood. <laughs> Somebody had mentioned, though, that the androids may have been upkeeping these cities and not just letting them. Complete. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, 5,000 years. Yeah, This right. is all gone, right? Yeah. Um, but saying that like, they were rebuilding and making sure that things were ready for the humans when they came back. Yeah. I was actually a pretty good um, response to what I had said, which yeah. is, I assumed that it was all abandoned. So the androids could certainly be doing that, but the ma- the machines are doing it as well. Sure, okay. Like the, the, um, the ruined factory or the first place you that's start right, right the factory they're the using that were... to manufacture more that's right machines and yeah. uh, that's where they're like that's where they get access to the database of all the human stuff mm-hmm. which would be a database they would then want to yeah. um archive or like you know protect uh right. what do you call that like mm-hmm. preserve? preserve preserve is the word that's i'm looking word. for yeah right so uh, i think the machines as well as the androids have a stake in preserving uh, like the structure, the civilization, the yeah. the culture of humanity. As I well. didn't think of it that way, but yeah. that's true. It's <clears throat> kind of both ways. That's, yeah. that's interesting. So that Just could par- be part why. and parcel of the machine interest in humans. Yeah, right? is like, hey, don't let that, this that stuff could be go to waste. Why the entire like structure of of human uh, infrastructure isn't just totally gone at this yeah. point, right? However, underwater, you're, you're this better have happened recently. I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so. The bedrock here was bombed out during the last war. Looks mm-hmm. like the whole city is starting to sink as a result. Um, flight units get sent in after command calls in an emergency. And the supply ship that you were supposed to be there that's carrying yeah. the missiles uh, is under attack out yep. in the ocean. So this giant machine, giant Goliath Huge. machine, comes up from under the ocean and just like grabs it as <laughs> it destroys just the destroys whole thing. this yeah. ship, right? I, I don't think it's the only one that was carrying missiles because there is one that you end up using in this fight to mm. take this thing down. But one of them, uh, one of the ships just gets like freaking destroyed. Uh, I can't believe they made giant robot whales. Oh, man. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't know. It's just really funny. I yeah. thought it was pretty funny, actually. <clears throat> Again, I think that this is like, there's so much uh, speculation you can make here about like who designed this machine and why? Right. Was it the aliens that built this thing, or was it the question. machines after the aliens were gone? And that why? Because something of this size, you you need a really good reason to expend this many that many resources on yeah. something this big yeah. that can only live in the water that basically disobeys you. That sounds like something, something a machine <laughs> without the intelligence of an uh, alien would okay, do. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, sure, sure. Personally, yeah, like but, a, a plant alien or something. Yeah. Um, so is this a machine? It's freaking huge. Uh, commanding officer 4B comes in of the hunter squadron and a bunch of other flight units. That's right. We're like, not the only ones here. Now. We'll take care of this now. Yep. Um, 9S suggests going back to the shore as they distract it and fight it where there's this massive mortar cannon. <laughs> That's right. Um, and I would guess probably to defend against this very machine. Somebody built this thing to like, okay, poof, 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 sure. Like stay yeah. away from the land. We don't want you the, here. Um, was it Sapphire <laughs> weapon? What was or, it? Yeah. 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 Uh, the, the Junon cannon. Yes, exactly. Right? Exactly. Um, so you use this thing to fire 
into the machine's mouth. Yeah, but and you like mess it up like it's so really bad. good. It's really cool. <laughs> I love the impact of like it's huge. It was really good. Yeah. Um, but the uh, command kind of thought that 9s was deserting a little bit. Yeah, um, that's right. Because he was like, "Oh, I got an idea. I'm going to go do this." And it's like, "Hey, you're not here to think. You're here to do stuff. We yeah. think. We think. We tell you yeah. what to do. You do right." And that's the the head body relationship, right? Yep. But. 9S is like going to do his own thing and has his own ideas and he seems to be relatively intelligent. Yeah, right? I think it's uh And it's so he leaves pod, and 2B's right? like let him go. 2B's pod is is suggesting That's right. that he yeah. call it that she call it in like yes. and report that he deserted. Say, hey, he's gone and yeah. then he becomes then they have to kill him. Yeah. Right? And she's like I'm not going to do that. That's stupid. <laughs> um but yeah, 9S ends up figuring out a genius way um, to help take down this thing. Mm -hmm. um, but also, as the command is kind of t giving them orders what to do, hey, escort this thing. Oh, no, there's a monster. Okay, sacrifice your life and go go kill the monster now. Um, 9S says that the command is, the commander is a slave driver. Yes. Um, and 2B says that if she didn't tell others what to do, then she wouldn't be a leader. Mm. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, in some ways, they seem to drive their purpose from the commander giving them instructions yes. right without someone telling them what to do they wouldn't know what to do slash they wouldn't do anything yeah um so they're setting up the commander as something of a goddess herself like in mm -hmm. a way right something from which the, the revelation is you know received Passes. and yeah. emanated from yeah, yeah so that's really good stuff also this robot is basically leviathan yep. so just uh that's my one note just one word leviathan leviathan so don't got much more to say about that that's what it is <laughs> um maybe also monstro from pinocchio yep um but yeah we end up doing this um this uh we end up taking it out in this really cool way but it doesn't totally work this robot whale has some way of like countering what yeah, we're doing there's and um these it's an emp like an emp right? yeah generators all over i did body not see this coming that you have to destroy yes yeah. But ultimately... Because it takes out, like, the whole hunter squadron with the, just an EMP blast. They yeah. They just, like, all fall out of the sky. Imagine, yeah, being, like, a robotic thing that is floating in the air, and all of a sudden you can't use your um, your electronics anymore, and they all just immediately drown. Yeah. Just, like, right into the ocean and drown. Like, gone. Yep. Like, it's Crazy. just... It's kind of creepy to think about a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, well, that's all I got. Yeah, so I wrote down some dialogue that describes what this machine is. That enormous machine is an ancient weapon. It was designed to help annihilate the androids, but it wound up going out of control. I was part of the machine's network when it happened. This is Pascal, I think, saying this. Mm, so oh, that's I remember right. Pascal it. shows up <clears throat> to help us out. Uh, the moment it reached land, it went berserk and began attacking everything in sight. No one could figure out how to stop it. We eventually yeah. marooned it deep in the ocean, but it seems to be searching for a way back. So even the machines abandoned this thing. It was like this thing we can't it's control. Unruly, it's it's right? too crazy. Yeah. It's too powerful. Um, so this is when 9S, like we were just saying, gets this idea and takes off. Pod 043 suggests reporting him. Uh, he's going to use the missiles we came here for, but the EMP needs to be disabled in order for their guidance systems to work. So he's going to fire the missiles that were being right. carried by the, the carriers. But in order for the guidance system to work all the way up into the point where it's going to hit its target, the EMPs on the boss need to be destroyed. Mm, that first. Makes, the that EMP makes sense, fields, yeah. which are being generated by these generators on its body. So you go around fighting those things and destroying them while 9S gets ready to launch this missile. Um, so 9S fires it and hits the machine with the missile. Um, but, uh, com but command loses their signal like right at this time. So command That's is right. no longer able yeah. to monitor what's going on. Um, and so we're kind of unsure what happened for a little while. It sort of cuts away yeah. from the POV of our characters into the POV of command up in the bunker. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, this is where we see more of the, the androids with their mouths covered. Yes. Right. Right. Mm hmm. So then we come back to the flooded city. Tubi washes up on shore. The giant, I love this. She kind of gets up as a really well-framed shot. The, the machine is just kind of like slumped over, but it's just standing, but it's like that was destroyed crazy. and disabled that was out so in the cool. distance. Yeah. It looks awesome. But it <laughs> let off, I guess, this big EMP blast that just blew everything away yes. for the most yeah. part. But Pascal shows up to save 2B. Yeah. But then 9S just gets completely completely blown away yeah so it's like where oh where's 9s and there's all these dead androids everywhere yeah. and she's looking around and uh you know command calls in to assure her we're looking for everybody yeah um 
there's these black box signals That's that, right. that you could track, but they're weak. Yeah. So the whole thing, so the close. whole mission at this point for Tubi becomes, I need to go find something to boost my ability to be able to track a weaker black box signal yeah. to be able to find out where they took 9S or where 9S ended up. So you end up going back. Uh, 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 Pod 043, I think, suggests getting a specific type of scanner, mm. a dynamic scanner that will help track weaker black box signals. Um, and you got to get it back at the resistance camp. Right. So you head back there. This is where the apologetic machine self-destructs for us. Yeah. I found the note here. Yeah, there it is. It's this, <laughs> this is where it happened. So the other one was just telling us, please don't kill me. Or if you kill me, please make it not painful. Yeah. But then you can choose not to not to kill the, the robot. This one just doesn't even give you a choice. Yes. Just immediately decides to self-destruct. And that's that. It's over. Yeah. That, that life is, is gone. Yep. So let's see. Back at the camp. Yeah, this is very Anemone interesting. points you toward some red-haired androids to talk to yes. in order to get the scanner. Anemone, Anemone starts trying to tell you a little bit more about them, these twins, yes. but then thinks better of it. But then stops. Yeah. Says, by the way, those girls... Well, anyways, uh, just keep going. Yeah, <laughs> never mind. Okay. They so are... We are, see their names, right? Yes. We, okay. This is Devola and Popola. Devola and Popola. Also characters... From the first near. Yes, and um, they, the name comes from a weapon in Drakengard called Devola Popola. Right? <laughs> uh, the story of the weapon. <laughs> I know, it's so funny. The story of the weapon is about two sisters, right? And so, yeah, right. Anyways, this, is, uh, this goes way back into yeah. even the, the Drakengard world. Yes. And these are also characters that um, I am not going to say anything about no. right now. But at the at moment, all. as we meet them, they seem kind of deflated maybe a little disinterested yeah. you know they're just kind of they're just there yeah. uh, they definitely look different from everyone else yep. um, but they're just kind of chilling and we can ask them questions and they'll talk to us um, particularly one of them I can't remember which one was more outgoing I think it's I can't you're right one of them one just of them. Gets, gets mad or says yeah, one of them, stuff all yeah. the time and the other one is yeah I can't remember which was which <laughs> but yeah very interesting their dispositions are just interesting and uh, yeah that's all we got we will talk a lot more again about how these characters are even here, mm -hmm. why, yeah. what role they had in uh, the world being uh, as it is now, yeah. all this stuff in kind of a final episode after we've directed everybody who's not played Replicant yet to go do that now. Um, but it, it, that, that, this is definitely something we can't talk about no. at all. It would nope. be huge spoilers for the first game. So um, anyway. Uh, but just know that those two characters are major characters from the first game. Yeah. So you get the thing, right? You get the scanner. And Tui gets a signal reading down from underneath uh, the city and the tunnels where you found, like, the aliens were hiding or they yeah. were, where their bases were, where you fought Adam and Eve before. The, their little temple. Um, and so you kind of follow the signal and you arrive in this colorless white city yeah it was so interesting called the, the, the its name is the copy city. city it was it. it was designed built by adam as he describes a little bit later yeah um you can say that this is uh physical like it has all the material but it doesn't have a value like there's there's yeah. no value everything is black and white gray whatever um but there's there's no color there's no like there's there there is no value to anything so there's no um I'm trying to think of what. Well, yeah, I mean, they're it, it, kind of like a. It's just the objective material. Yes. And none of there's the no color experience, to the, world. the there's subjective no nuance experience to of the it. world. There's no. Yeah. There's nothing. What, that, you already used the word color. That's, That's the word I would it. use. It's the like, color, but it's not just. It's not just color. Not you just know? color in the strict sense, but yes. the color to life. There being color and you know interest and yes, variance that's and contrast and. Well, okay, uh, nuance to the world, right? That know sense of color. Now. They have the quantity of a world, but not the quality. They, yeah. It doesn't have any of the qualia. Yes. It just has the quantity. Right. Right. And that's uh, that's probably the better way to put it. Yeah. Um, so Pod tells you that this was, that the material is made from crystallized silicon and carbon. And all mm -hmm. of the details about this place are unknown. There's nothing in the database about yeah, this place. Yeah, nothing. Also, Yorha units were killed and placed here deliberately. Again, oh, yeah, this yeah. was kind of like similar. Somebody put them there. They yeah. weren't killed there. Back in yeah. the desert, way back at the beginning of the game, where it's like, why are all these dead androids just piled around here? Like, they, they must have been brought here deliberately. Same thing in this place, right? 
So you find Adam eventually. He says, welcome to my beloved city. I, or we, machine life forms, I suppose, have a keen interest in humanity. Love, family, religion, war. The more human records I unearth, the more charmed I am by their complexity. This city is one of many areas I created out of a desire to understand, to know humans. So he mm -hmm. created the city, but like we said, he's missing a lot of the the quality, color the quality, the color, yeah. That it is required to really understand the human experience. Yeah. So he's like, again, he's getting there a little more right. every time we mm -hmm. see him. Also, he's fully dressed this time. He's, he's got wearing like a, a shirt. white shirt. Yeah. Yes, I've got a note here. So he's now wearing a shirt. These are, these would be the garments of linen, right? So yeah. he has graduated from no clothing, right? He even talks about, uh, what would you say, the aliens, right? Being plant-like, yes. right? The idea of the word like to cut, <clears throat> the word to cover, um, kifar or kippur, like Yom Kippur is the day of atonement, but it means the day of covering mm. in Hebrew. Um, they were covered by the plants, right? The plant aliens, uh, but they graduated from that, mm. left the garden, left the plants, went out into the world, got garments of skin, right? Yep. Now he's graduating up. He's leveling up in culture as yep. a human. Now mm -hmm. he's wearing the white garments of linen, which were the priestly clothes, uh, according yep. to the Bible. Right. So anyways, he's, he's moving up. It's still black and white though, yes. which is so interesting. Right. He, he, a lot about these characters, don't, they don't seem that interested in, in color or in, in quality stuff. They're, they're doing what needs to be done, but everything is remaining black and white, right. which is so interesting because that's how like the androids basically as well right. are doing a very similar thing. Right. Um, and so I, that's, that's probably a, about where I'm going to go with that right now. Yeah. Uh, but it's just Adam, not Eve. Yes. Just Adam here at the t yes. at this time. And he's facing to be kind he of is, by And himself. he is waxing philosophical. Oh yeah. And I love it. I really like Adam. <laughs> I think it's a very good character. Yeah. So he says, uh, it's grand, don't you think? Almost spiritual. Ooh. And yet it's currently <laughs> nothing more than an android graveyard. I seek to learn and adopt all facets of humanity. Some desired love, others family. Only then did I realize the truth. The core of humanity is conflict. We talked about we this. Talked about we talked about this. <laughs> episode one, I think. Episode one, yeah. uh, I think. Yeah, it, it's exa it leads okay. all into this same concept. This is difficult. This is a difficult yeah. pill to swallow. I think. It is. It's um, hard. The word core comes from like a Latin word, basically the Spanish word corazón, meaning mm -hmm. heart. Yep. Coraz uh, corazón. Core. A core of something is the heart of the thing. And yep. the heart of the human is conflict, mm -hmm. right? It's fighting. It's tension. It's argument. It's, yep. you know, it's, it's uh, not, not peaceful behavior. We'll just no. put it that way. And that is, that is like at the core what humans yes. are. They steal, they fight, they kill. This mm -hmm. is humanity in its purest form. That That is profoundly it's a pretty true, true statement. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a pretty true statement. Like, and, and we, I, I won't repeat myself. We kind of all yeah. went over the reasons why in episode one, but uh, I kind of still hold to that. Now, again, conflict does not have to come in the form of war right. and violence. Sure. You, but you need conflict to feel right. like you have any purpose in life. Yeah. And yeah. so humans... There needs if, to be friction. There needs to be, yeah, something to push against. Yeah, in order for you to feel like you're growing, right. learning, yeah. adapting, progressing in some form. And without that progression, uh, life becomes just a completely boring hellhole. Yep. yep. <laughs> that Absolutely. you can't stand. Yeah. So you have to have conflict. Now... When there is a lack of conflict or in times of peace, you'll find that humans tend to find a way to create the conflict yep. again because yep. we just, we can't, can't yeah. stand having no conflict. And so he's realized that he's realized sort of like what he says, humanity in its purest form is, uh, the core of humanity is conflict. Yeah. And then she says, you know nothing about humanity. And he says, have I offended you, little <laughs> android? Did I speak ill of your beloved humans? The truth can be so painful. I strive to obtain nothing more or less than the essence of humanity itself. We machines exist in a connected network. We are immortal, mm. invincible. And yet within all those infinite bits of data, there exists not even the merest flicker of being, of life. Of being, yeah. Death, even the concept of death, has no meaning to us. Thus I decided that I shall risk my life 
in battle. I have severed my connection to the network. Now let us embrace death. So he, he decided crazy. the only way to have the human experience is to have the real is risk of death, of death yeah. which is the ultimate conflict. <laughs> and in some ways he is, he is right, but it's, it's different when you take it upon yourself, right? Yes. In, in some ways, you know, it's, I don't know, it's, it's self-sacrificial in a way. Yes. There, there can be easily be something like a biblical element to this because that's clearly what he's doing, right? He's yes. trying to, like, they're drawing upon the resources of their knowledge of humanity. Clearly, a huge one is the Bible, right? And yes. so it's like, oh, the voluntary will to self-sacrifice, right? And that only then can you transcend to the true humanity, right? Yes. And uh, he's, he's uh, voluntarily taken it upon himself to allow this to happen. Also, though, he just doesn't know anything about death. Yep. He just doesn't know. He's like, oh, dying. Ooh, it'd be very interesting. Oh, this is uh, in Peter Pan, actually. This is one of the famous lines in not the Disney movie, but the Barry's, um, uh, his original play yeah. uh, was from Peter Pan at the end when Hook is like, I'll kill you. And he goes, ooh, to die would be an awfully great adventure. And that's <laughs> Peter Pan. But that's the naivety of Peter Pan. He's, yeah. he's a kid, right? Yep. He's this kid who's pretending to be an adult and he's fighting these big grown pirates, but he's refusing to grow up, you know? Mm. And, and he looks at death as being the same way as Adam, where it's like, ooh, death. Ooh, that's a cool thing. Yep. Let's try that once. Yep. <laughs> like, okay, you know, yep. maybe once is all you get. To die will be an awfully big adventure. I actually love that quote. I think about it often. Well, and I think even, well, you think about thrill seekers, right? Like people who will bungee jump or uh, skydive or um, go do like really dangerous, uh, you know, like yeah, extreme sports. Just to feel and things alive. Like that. Yeah. It's, 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 it's just like, and this is why I, I truly believe in, you know, there are people who disagree with me in the comments all the time when I bring this up, Fair but I, I have still not really seen a persuasive argument to the contrary yet, f at least for me, that eternal life would be like hellishly boring after a certain period of time passed. Mm -hmm. Whatever ginormous, right. impossible to comprehend span sure. of time that is would be, yeah. at some point, you just would be like, what is left uh, and and I think yeah. some people they can only really feel alive when they're brushing against that fine line right. between life and death. There's something about the human personality that yes. likes to straddle that line, it, even in comedy and all sorts of ways. Yeah. It's like ooh, find that edge, and that's where you play. That's yeah. where you play. That is when you can really appreciate yeah. being alive because you feel that right. that. Th the th thrill, but really just it, what it really means is I could possibly die and you feel the fear of that woo and it's a rush yeah. and then, oh, I survived and there's almost this gratitude, this relief, this release, this thankfulness, right? Uh, gratitude for the life that you have that you can't really understand if you're not up against that level. Something right? at, to that extreme, yeah. Right. And no, I think I, that's I, what I, essentially Adam is trying to do here. Yeah. Right. It's like, I can't understand what it means to be alive if there's no possibility Boom. of death. Yes. Yeah. If I'm part of the machine network and there's death has no meaning for us because we can just, our, our consciousness is all connected and I just reconnect yeah. to it and build another body and come back again. Then I then, don't know what it means to be alive. Then life has no meaning. Yeah. Right. If death has no meaning. Then life has no so meaning. So I have to fight you right. with the real possibility, the true risk of having a true, right. for real death. You got to hand it to him. Like, he's dedicated. <laughs> he's correct. He really does want to saying. know. Yes, he's right. And he just doesn't get the ramifications of yes. the implications of what he's doing. Yes. But he is right that that is what you have to do. And, and I think it's fitting that he's in a colorless world when he decides to do this. Because this is where you start approaching the color, like understanding the color of life when there's an actual real risk of losing your life. Yeah. When there's like, you, you have to actually, because again, if you're immortal, if, if there's no chance that you're going to die ever and you're going to live forever, then you can put off 
literally indefinitely forever. Yeah, I'll do that later. I yeah. could do that later. I could understand this later. I could right. try this another time. But Adam's in a hurry. There's no pressing. There's no urgency to solve a problem. There's no right. conflict in it because it could always, you can just kick that can further down the road. Totally. Yeah. yeah. Where you start to see the color in life and really appreciate its quality is when there's a, a hard time limit on that, when there's a real risk that it right. won't continue tomorrow. You don't have forever. You right? need to do this now. So yeah. I feel like this is his way of trying to fill that colorless world with color. Yes. Is by fighting to be with well, the real chance of dying. And and I, it, it is true that he does get to experience some of that qualia, some of the quality of life when he dies, is what he says. He says, um, yeah. I feel cold, right? It's yes. so dark and cold. cold. Yep. Well, dark and cold are human ways of of experiencing the world, not yeah. just objectively being aware that it exists and can be manipulated, but to actually like live in it and experience it. Um, you know, darkness and coldness are color to the subjective mind in a way that it, you know, the way that it interacts with objective space. Yeah. So very interesting. Yeah. So spoiler alert: we kill him. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, before that. Um, no, I've got a few notes before I, 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 I just wanted to that bring that up. I, I, it's, I think it's also really important to note how committed he really is to this. Hugely committed. Because oh, yeah. he's fighting her, and he doesn't want to fight her and have her hold back in any way. Like, he wants the real, truest possible risk of dying yeah. to happen to him here. Because he has a whole like contingency here to get her to fight with all of her might, with all of her desperation by saying he's got 9S captive. Right. He knows that yeah, she yeah. cares about him. And, so and if she he makes will a fight. threat yes, to 9S, good. Good. then I'm for sure going to get the best possible chance of being killed <laughs> in this encounter. So he's fully yes. committed to this. Yeah. It's like the only way I can understand what it means to be alive is to have the greatest possible conflict. I need someone who really wants to kill me yeah. really, really bad and is trying as hard as I can and is skilled enough to do it. Then I fight for my life. Then I understand what life is. That's crazy. Only then. That's crazy. So that's why he did that. That's why he brought 9S. That's why he points it out to her. And he, you just see the thrill that he gets yeah. when she gets pissed when she sees yes, that. It's absolutely. like, yes, that's it. So that's the feeling. That, okay, now yeah. I can know what it means to be alive. <laughs> that's crazy it's crazy it's, it's insane behavior but there's an actual real logic behind there is. why he's doing and it. he's rest he's wrestling with life itself when he does this yes right? like he's he's dancing with destiny whatever it is yes um but i i do i do agree that um that eternal life needs to have some friction or some conflict conflict or some um you know, growth, um, you know, becoming progression in general, like even sure. like just the sense of it. Yeah. There is this idea floating around there though, that whatever part of your brain makes you d want conflict can be, uh, what's the word edited out <laughs> 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 and that humans, sure. humans can become little vegetables who well, are perfectly content to do well, then, nothing all day. Um, the question becomes, would we really be alive? Anymore? No, we would not, but we wouldn't know it. And yeah. that would be that. Right. Anyways, something like that may come in our lifetimes. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows, dude? Um, also, as far as the core of humanity being conflict, Yoko Taro himself said basically this exact thing in an interview. Uh, the interviewer asked him, do you have faith in humanity? Basically. Mm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I remember this interview. Yeah. yeah he I said, read do you one. believe in humanity? And he said, is there anyone out there who believes in humanity? <laughs> he just mocked the interviewer's question. Yeah. He was just like, yeah. does anyone believe in humanity? Are yeah. you kidding me? You believe in humanity? Then he, he said, I don't think that humanity, humankind is worthy of trust is what he yeah. said. And then he lists all the reasons because of the death and war and marrying someone just because you like how they look. Um, and like all these things where he's yeah. just like hum, humankind basically is not worthy of trust or belief in any way. Yeah. Um, very dark response. It's a pretty from cynical the director of this view, game. Yeah. but like then again, I mean, well, I'm not going to say he's totally he's wrong. Not wrong. I'm going to say that he might be kind of wrong. <laughs> he's definitely not completely wrong. Yeah. Um, but he might be kind of wrong. It like what does it mean to believe in humanity? Like I don't know. Yeah, right. Um, clearly he's got a definition for that, which means like, is humanity long for this universe? Right. Sure. <laughs> maybe not. <laughs> but but maybe right. So yeah. you know we'll see. We'll, we'll, we'll see find how things out go. at some point. So my note we'll here says, Adam strives to attain nothing less than the essence of humanity itself, 
Remember that according to Sartre, existence precedes essence. Adam is making the opposite conclusion, that there's some essence that all every human has shared in, um, has shared in, that is passed down, right? But mm. Sartre says we make our own essence and we're, uh, we're all different. So Adam's goal, according to Sartre, would then be impossible. Yeah. Um, but I guess he hasn't read Sartre. <laughs> 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 Just kidding. Sartre also might be wrong. There's also that. Yeah, right. So then, yeah, he severs his connection. 9S is really, really messed up. Yep. Like when we see him, it's not, just a, it's not just like, oh, I'm trapped, come save me. Like he has been brought to the brink of death yep. himself. Yep. He has been stabbed and mutilated and hung up like um, on, on pikes basically yep. and pinned against this wall. Yep. Um, and then, of course, when we're so pissed because he did that, that Adam dies, he then says, it is dark and cold. Yep. So dark. So So cold. he experiences the, you know, the, these qualities of life. <laughs> the color that Adam finally gives to the black and white world is the color red. He colored his world with his own blood and the blood of the androids. The meaningless, valueless world he created finally has meaning. It finally has color. He understands it now. It is a dark, bloody, cold place. Yeah. Also, I didn't notice this before, but 9S, I noticed in the scene, 9S has an X on his necklace. He's wearing a necklace, has an X on it. Oh. And then 2B, the way her blouse kind of goes up towards a peak and then goes across in the middle, it's got the letter A on mm. it. I don't know exactly what these mean. Uh, again, I, I have not played this game. Unfortunately, I am aware of probably the biggest spoiler, spoiler the, the biggest reveal of the game. Um, I have been aware of that for years, um, and I found it very interesting. <laughs> so I'm still, I, even just the way that it was told to me, I was like, well, "Okay, okay, we'll see, we'll see how that goes." But I'm ex yeah. I'm excited to experience it now. But I already am aware of of um, where this game is going. But I have not played it before, so a lot of these things are, are very new to me. Yeah. Um, I don't know if this is relevant, but somebody in the comment section of our last video brought up that 9S is dressed as a butler and 2B is dressed as a maid. Loosely. <laughs> now, butler and maid, like servants for a master, sure, yeah. right? Like... You know, I can, if that is, I didn't notice it myself, yeah, but really upon think thinking about either. it, like kind of, yeah, sort of enough, um, to where they're, they've taken upon themselves this predetermined role that yeah. they are to be servants of, uh, of a master and they just kind of do what they're told. I feel like it kind of adds into that, but also the black and white attire, right? They aren't. Although, who is it? The commander kind of wears, she just wears white. She, though, she, right? she wears white. She wears white. Everyone else wears yeah. black. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's see here. So, 2B picks up 9S after killing, uh, Adam. They kind of walk out of the yep. copied city. Back at the resistance camp, an enemy, uh, says that she's going to have 9S sent back to the bunker and repaired. Um, 2B thanks her and this surprises yep. an enemy like, oh, you're not the type who usually says thank you. Then, you know. Right. 2B is kind <clears throat> of changing. She's going yeah. through some, uh, progression yeah. as yeah. a character, as she, a person. She definitely is. She, she calls also, them nines. She yes. said thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's big for her. Big for her, that's huge. Um, also, she's not, like, she cares about him inhabiting the body. She doesn't care that his consciousness can be sent up and then they can bring him down in a new perfect body. Yes. And, like, she doesn't care. She wants his specific body right. connected with the mind, right? Yes. With the, you know, like, the soul of the whole person. She finds value in that, not right. just not just the, the, memory the memories that can be downloaded. Yeah. Um, so then an anime tells Tubi that Command wants to talk to her as, as soon as possible. Um, they say, upon further analysis, we learn that the machine, codenamed Adam, was responsible for managing half of the entire network. That's right. So, um, so Eve would be the their, other half. Half their network is basically down yeah. now. Completely right. down. Right. That's crazy. Uh, a disruption of this magnitude to their network should weaken the machine significantly. Uh, Tubi says, what's going to happen to 9S? He'll undergo a full data overhaul up here. Assuming we don't encounter any problems, we're planning to partner him with you again. So like, okay, sweet. Um, so Tubi's new mission is to analyze current trends among the machines because half their network was, or the, the 
I guess the protocol that was managing half their network yeah. is gone now. So right. their 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 uh, behavior should probably change a lot. Yeah, how has that changed them? I, I did write so, this down here, though. I, I didn't read. I, I sort of just now touched on it, but I uh, want to read what I wrote here. Okay. Um, I said, that, well, there is an old idea that the spirit and the body have to be combined to make a soul. Yes. Right? And that, um, you know, either one is disembodied, but together. And that's where the word nefesh means neck. I brought uh, this up. I can't remember where I brought was, this up. Yeah, I remember this. Um, I don't but it, when, it's but. the Hebrew word nefesh, which is essentially where the idea of soul, at least in the West, comes from, is is the neck, right? So you have the mind and the body that's connected by the neck, right? And right. The, the spirit and body has a similar type of connection. So, like, to talk about 9S as being, a, a, like, a, a soul Right, you need both of them have to be connected. They're both important: the mind and the body, not yeah. just or the spirit and the body, um, not just one or the other. Right. Okay. So yes, now we go to Pascal. Right? Yeah. So now we head over to Pascal's village. Um, he says that there was a group of machines that tried to form an alliance with his village. Yes. Uh, they're trying to establish their own colony in the abandoned factory, the first level from the game. He agrees to go investigate it with Two B. So. No. When they meet up, Pascal warns Tubi that the machines can be unpredictable. She's like, uh, does that include you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. And he's like, well, basically, yeah. Um, yes, right. We can speak, of course, but I find that language contains many ways to hide one's true intentions. That's really good. Yeah, it's, it's, that's, it's a really good line. And that is, uh, that is Pascal, I think, as well. Yes. Right. Is, is Pascal the one who said that um, people, you believe somebody because... Of how they look, not necessarily because yes, of wor their yes, words, right? right? Uh, that, that's in Pense. It's all about yeah. how we tend to trust, you know, somebody who's dressed up in a suit and looks nice. Even if it's nonsense. Even if this, uh, you know, homeless guy over here is speaking good sense. Yes. We tend just not to trust them just purely based on how they look. Yeah. Okay, so this is great because pa Pascal is kind of elaborating on this now. And he's basically saying that language, right? It just, there's so many, there are too many different ways to hide your true intentions when when it's all being conveyed through language, Yeah. right? And that's why humans tend to look at other things like, how are you dressed? Are you a hobo? Yeah. Then your word, your language, you know, I'm going to assume that you're disguising something or. Yes. Anyways, right. it's really good. Um, especially like just the idea that, you know, we convey our thoughts through words, right? But words almost built into language. This is especially true in Japanese um, because they omit the subjects and there, there's so much implicit yeah. stuff that happens in a conversation right. in Japanese um, where it's like you're, you, you, can, you can be very evasive and they're very indirect when they speak. They don't speak directly. Mm. Um, so within the, especially within the Japanese language, you, there are many ways to hide one's true intentions. Many, many, many ways. Um, and that would probably be true um, in other languages as well. Yeah. Uh, but it's definitely true um, in Japanese. I, I, I think that concept is really good. Yeah. So you come inside, and the there's like basically there's basically a death cult here. <laughs> yep, yep, totally, hundred um, percent. And so once again, uh, just you know, I know it's repetitive at this point. <laughs> we're gonna learn more about the leader character, the name of the it, name. what that references in real yeah. life, and all that in playthrough B. Right okay. now, we're just getting through the plot points, yep. so that we don't have to repeat this next time. We can talk all about the philosophy, but. Uh, a lot of these robots are saying things like you enter the domain of God down this yeah. corridor if you would. <laughs> so they're going down there uh, and, and course, Pascal you descend downwards, right? Yeah, you're going down. It's a uh, not an elevated ascension. It's a descent downwards, right? There's some yeah. symbolic meaning there. This is right. a death cult, right? So this all seems to be pretty shady to me says Pascal. <laughs> so why are you still here? Says to And she's like, or uh, he's like, well, I brought you this far, didn't I? It's my duty to see this through to the end. And uh, Tubi says, well, appreciate it. So the do this door leads to the sanctum of his grace. So they take you inside. And you yeah. come into this room where all these machines are just holding lighted torches before this big throne. There's a, yeah. a machine sitting on that throne there. Again, that character will be someone we talk about a lot in playthrough B. Yeah. But uh, as it's sitting there, it its head sort of detaches and rolls onto the ground. And, and once again, just empty. Just like an empty trash can. Nothing inside of There's it. There's nothing yeah. there. Nothing there. It's so anyway, yep. it's so interesting. And then uh, his wondrous grace 
has become a god. Has become a we god. as well shall become as gods. And they start repeating this. We yep. as well shall become as gods. All of you shall become as gods. We yep. all die together and become as gods. So this is a death cult machine colony <laughs> well, who I believe love- that death is the way in which you achieve godhood. So they're all going right. to die and become as gods. That's their belief. Right? I've got stuff here. But okay. um, Adam essentially reached a similar conclusion. I love how this game kind of leads you through, you know, these, I don't know, just these different ideas and the way the story works, right? We just encountered Adam and Adam's like, he, he just kind of had this epiphany that he has to die. Yes. Right. And he's he just dives headfirst into it. And then we go to these robots and it seems that it seems that ideas spread really quickly yeah. amongst robots. Yep. Like from the very beginning of the game, the robots couldn't speak at all. Mm-hmm. Right. And now all of a sudden it's like they were we encounter more and more that can speak better and better. Then they start dressing in more and more clothes. They start it's almost like there's this cycle. And it's almost yeah. like uh, throughout the game, it's the cycle of birth living your life and then death, yes. right? And and these robots are experiencing this full cycle, um, but they're immortal. So if death is to happen, they have to bring it upon themselves. There is no other way for them to die unless, you know, we kill them, which we do, right. lots of them. Um, <laughs> but left to their own devices, this doesn't happen naturally. They're having to recreate this. They're having to recreate the concept of being born, of growing up, of, you know, like finding meaning in life and then deal with the, with, with dying in the end. Mm -hmm. And it's really genius. I love the way Yoko Taro kind of like puts the whole lifespan into, into a single story and weaves it all together in a way that's almost not noticeable. Um, But it just flows really, really well. Yeah. It's great stuff. And, but it does seem to me that the peacemakers above have no idea about the death cult below because yeah. once we kill a bunch of them and like make our ascent back up, um, they're confused. They're like, what? The, the master is dead. Wait, like what's going on? Everyone's yeah, jumping into uh-huh. lava pits. Like what, what is this? Yeah. And there's and, some of them that are like begging for yes. you not to kill them. Yeah. One of the robots is named believer, I guess, um, says, how am I supposed to live now? Right. They've yeah. lost their leader. They've lost their meaning. They've lost their uh, faith, I suppose. And they don't know how to live now. Another robot says, the only option left is to die. I'm so scared, Mm. right? Because their whole cult has basically fallen apart. They're all killing themselves. Most of the hardcore committed ones, like they jumped in the lava right in the first second. But a lot of them are like, I don't want to do that, right? They they want to cling on to life. Um, But then the question, the only option left is to die. I'm so scared. That was a really good line. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's about the most human line <laughs> that, that has been uttered. And it's uttered by a robot, of course. Yeah. Really, really crazy. Yeah. And, and there's some other good ones, too. Uh, let's see what I copied down here. So, well, Pascal first. Oh, by the way, Pascal doesn't do any fighting here. No, he's like freaking out yeah. the whole time. He's like ducking. <laughs> and yeah, he doesn't help us at all. Uh, 2B is the only one because he's a pacifist. But yeah, I was right. This is shady. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. Fascinating, though. I've never seen machines with such unique perspectives. Less talk, more running. <laughs> See, she he's says. trying to be understanding, and yeah. he's trying to, you know, maintain his peaceful ways and not judge anybody. Yeah, it's uh, becoming difficult. I think. Yeah. So uh, let's see. There was one that said, "No, please don't kill me. Dying won't make us gods." Oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah. So th- th- there's just these types of lines that are being uttered as you're trying to like get out of this place. Right. You see, s- m- most of them, like you're saying are fully committed to the idea that we're going to die and become as gods, and we have to kill you so you can become a god. Sure, too. we're doing you a favor, actually. Because <laughs> yeah. if they were truly committed to their belief, then why would they not take kill, others with them? Yeah, right. right? Yeah. So, so uh, but then there are several of them doubting Rots. this. Yeah. Doubting this all the way up. The moment has come, and um, they, they don't want to die. So once you exit this elevator, 9S meets you in a machine body. Yeah, I, I right. hacked into this machine from the bunker. I'm controlling it. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Um, so he's kind of like, you know, telling you how to get out of there. You know, he's part of the network. So he understands like the layout of this place and giving you directions and stuff. Yeah. Um, okay. So after escaping this place. Oh, well, one more line then. You so real quick. So 9S, he, then we did end up letting him upload his mind and he's yes. just gonna be a new person right? but he, from the bunker now he's yes. hacked into these machines and yeah but um we'll just say Tubi doesn't like that she's trying to keep his body yeah but it keeps not working out the way that she wants we'll put it yeah. that way um 
I have this line here. I was just trying to think through their little cult and figure out exactly where their minds were at. So here you go. Uh, when you kill yourself, you become a god. For in that moment and that moment only, you are truly the master of your own fate. Mm, true. You, that's it. I don't <laughs> think I need to elaborate on that. Okay. So we've got, I've got a scene with like Eve With now. Eve at the long yeah, table. She right? is pissed. So in the next scene, we see Eve yeah. at this table. Why? Why did you have to die? It's not fair. My yeah. only brother. Damn them. I'll kill them. I swear I'll kill them all. So this is just more uh, reinforcement of this idea that Eve really embodies the, the, uh, the yin, the, yeah. the chaotic side of the yin-yang, right? The, right. the strongly emotional side, the intuitive side. The, um, so after the death of Adam... Eve is basically just gone totally berserk at this point. Completely. Is completely committed now to uh, revenge and destroying everything because my brother was the only thing that gave me any purpose in life. That's yeah. gone now, so I'm just going to destroy everything yeah. kind of uh, attitude towards all this, right? Then we then see this sort of like tattoo spreading yeah, it across his body grows. and yeah. just like like transforming him. Yep. Um and then the Eve's eyes turn red, I think. Yeah. It, now, isn't yeah. the yin yang, yeah, the yin is the white part, and the black yin part is, is the yang. Yin is black. Yin is black. Yeah. Or, oh, sorry. Yes, that's right. Yes. Yang is the, the masculine. Yeah. I always flip that. I know. Me. So the yang is masculine, the yang is white, the yin the is yin. the feminine, yeah. and the yin is black. Yeah. And that's what's sort of like taking over. Yes. It's that side. Yeah. Uh, without any temperance, without any balance. Right. Yeah, of no balance. The yeah. yang anymore it's just totally taking over and this is something we talked about a lot in our xenogears podcast oh right is about the the anima and animus and the balance and the and the oh, yeah, developing the inner right. opposite and how and you need you, to maintain that part of yourself yeah. instead of just giving in to one or the other right yeah otherwise like y you basically will mistreat uh, the opposite sex or, or people right. who identify on the other side of the spectrum. You won't be able to understand right. anything. You won't be able to communicate well with yeah. anyone. You'll just lose all sense of balance and just kind of lose control. Whether you embody too much of one side or the other. Either whether one. you uh, yep. embody the, the yang too much. Yeah. Same thing, right? Like you, you'll just be so obsessed with logic and so obsessed with order and so obsessed that you have no concept of the intuitive part of yourself yep. and won't be able to really connect with anybody yeah. who understands that side of themselves. So that's what's happening here is, is, is the yin is completely yeah. taking over I agree. Eve. Right? Also, it's worth noting Eve is not wearing the extra clothes that Adam was. Eve yes, is, right. is wearing the, the skin garments, the, skin. the leather pants, yeah. but did not feel the need to wear a shirt or, yeah. uh, you know, to, to dress up any further, right? right? So Eve is a lot more in touch with the animal nature, yes. right? And yeah. this is really good because Adam's gone, his half of the, you know, the whatever he, however he was influencing the robots just by existing, that's gone, right? And this is really good because after this scene, we encounter um, a machine that begins to eat the androids, yes. right? Like yes, they start eating. People. You don't digest like what? What is going on? These these robots, yeah. these machines are completely losing it. But I think it's because Eve is the only side now that's controlling yep. the robots, and she is giving in to the animal nature, right? Completely yeah. giving in completely yeah. to to you know the the chaotic side of things, to to the natural side of things. Yeah. Um, and because of that, the robots start literally eating. The androids. Yeah. It's creepy. Yep. Really creepy. Yeah. It's like, you don't even have a stomach. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's no Madness. balance and there's no logic in their behavior anymore. No. It's no. purely driven by rage. Rage. Emotion. That's it, yes. yep. The, you, like you're saying, the animalistic instinct. Yep. None of it to is consume, tempered by to kill. Any, any sort of like reason or yeah. logic anymore, which is what Adam which represented Adam. Yep. of the two halves of the, of the sort of protocol of that network, right? Yeah. So, yeah, you get back to the resistance camp and these machines are overrunning the place and just slaughtering and eating androids there. Um, it's so crazy. So, uh, you know, you're, you're trying to help people get out of there, you know, escape. Um, you're fighting a, another Goliath machine oh. on the outside of the village. Yeah. You have a note before that. Eve has wings. Is that correct? Uh, when you f fight him in the final form, I think, right? Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. I just, it's one of my notes after... Um, you know, this whole scene with Eve was that he has like wings. Yeah. I think in the final boss 
sort okay. of like uh, when you're fighting him, he's like flying, yeah. right? This is this is my line. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> so Eve, Eve, after this whole scene of just pure madness, like, oh my gosh, what this this person has completely lost it. Yeah, right. I wrote, uh, it is not good for a man to be alone. Ah, uh, yep. Yep, Eve, right. Eve doesn't know what to do, yep. right? They kind of relied on each other. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you, you, before this, you, before you realize that it's Eve controlling this thing, you're just fighting this Goliath machine. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, it tells you about how you're going to die. Um, oh, sorry. After you destroy the machine itself for that first boss fight, Eve comes out of it. That's right, yeah. And then talks about how you're all going to die and fuses with a bunch of other machines. They all that's start right. crawling that on him. That's right, Which is reminiscent of how they were born in the first place. Oh, sure, It was yeah, in the desert right. when they all sort of climbed up in the... That's they right. all sort of like came together into this amalgamation Ooh. of little machines. And then like, like that you Adam that and out. Eve were born. And so like they're, they're kind of doing this now. They're like just it's building like a like book armor end. around him. Yeah. yeah. And so like as you're fighting that's cool. him to like get in through you're just like blasting yeah, away all of, of these them. freaking machines really cool flying off it, 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 from a physics standpoint uh it's actually just really cool yeah like if you feel the impact of almost every hit because it's just you hit and it's just just hit machines. It's like a flying Sauron off. at the beginning of the Fellowship of the Ring with his <laughs> yes, like, boom, boom. It's with the just big, like with the big mace. this way. Yeah, oh, totally crazy like cool. Um, it's it's freaking awesome though. Uh, it's a it's a really 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 cool yeah. fight aesthetically. Um, and it, it's sort of just like ramping up chaotically more and more. It gets like crazier and crazier. Yeah, it gets crazy. This fight fighting. is really cool. Um, but you, you end up taking him down. Um. Oh, let's see. I've got some... No, no, no. Oh, this is some dialogue, he says, right before the final phase of the fight. Ah, uh, there you are. I think he says to 9S, because 9S arrives at this point, because he came down to fight with you now from the bunker. Yeah. I know you two oh, feel right, the yeah. same, that this world is utterly meaningless. So uh, I know you feel the same. This is his conclusion he's come to. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, my brother was everything, and now everything must die. Why did you kill my brother? And he's just saying this as he keeps fighting you. Uh, so take him down. Finally kill him. Um, like, <laughs> Tubi just goes, like, stabs him, like, right in the head. Oh, the with a broken sword, <laughs> with, too. Like, yeah, it's like, like a... The, yeah. Yeah, it's a broken just, sword. Oh, man. Right like, the head. for Bang. a broken blade, that was impressive, man. <laughs> yeah, like, some, that takes some strength, for yeah. sure. Um, so she says, Tubi says, finally, it's over. But then 9S starts losing it. <laughs> yeah, because something is like he's got like a, wrong. a virus or something, right? Yeah. Um, this is where it all comes to a head because it's yes. like 9S is just like, hey, something's up, but just like, I'll just, my mind got uploaded like an hour ago, so I'll just die and then you can, and then just tell me what happened and then we'll, yes, be, we'll be up, right. right? She is done. She is sick of it. She is yeah. not having this. She is like, <laughs> I'm saving your physical body. Yeah. She does not want to do it. Yeah. I mean, he's like, well, you have to. I really screwed up, he says. Yeah. I must have been corrupted when Eve detached from the network. So he's been in the machine network quite a lot recently. He's been hacking in. That's right. Yeah. He's been controlling other machines. Yep. He's He's been like, he's been in there. And so he came out of that hacking, having been corrupted by something. Yeah. So uh, I must have been corrupted when Eve detached from the network. It's okay. I can always reload my backup data at the bunker. And then she says, but you'll, but you'll lose you. Yeah. Yep. The you that exists at this right. very moment. No. Mm -hmm. And he says, guess so, but we can't upload the corrupted data to the bunker. So please to be, I want you to do this for me. Mm. So he wants her to be the one to kill him. And Gosh, this scene is so hard. He basically just like strangles yeah. him, right? Just strangles him. And he just sort of like lets her and he's just oh, choking and she's crying and sobbing, right? As she strangles him to death. Yep. It always ends like this, she says. So this That's is like right. the third yeah. time now yeah. that this has happened. And it's just, it's her essentially saving him, but not able to actually save him. And he dies and gets, you know, yeah. his mind uploaded and whatever. And she, so she's like the third time she's lost him. The third time that, yep. she, that he's died. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, it's hard enough. You lose somebody you care about one time, they die. Yeah. And imagine three times. They keep coming back and they just keep dying. Um, so she notices that a machine close by, one of the heads, 
uh, oh, it is starts still, blinking, right? Yeah, it's still, the like, lights kind of start blinking. Yeah. Then they all sort of start resonating with each other all over the place. And 9S awakens inside of one of the machines. One of the big, yeah, the yeah, big, big machines. Ones. Kind of yeah. reminded me of the Iron Giant a little bit. Yeah. yeah. yeah that's kind of the look of it, right? Um, and he kind of lifts her up. It's kind of a cool shot. He's really cool. Sitting there staring at her, and she's looking yeah. back at him as he's holding her in the palm of his hand. Looks like I left my personal data in the machine side of things. Next thing I knew, my sense of self was regenerated over the surrounding network. So not only is his mm. memory back up at the bunker, they can make a 9S up there, but like he lives in the machine network now too, which is but, crazy. But which one's the real him? Yeah, which, right? you know. Oh, geez. Because, I don't know. <laughs> they always could make a thousand 9Ss if they wanted to. Yeah. Right? But who is, who is 9S? I know. Right? No. Having multiple selves fused together like this is pretty valuable experience. So I wanted to record it, but I couldn't access any storage areas yet. So I just multiplexed it over the memories of some nearby enemies <laughs> so that when I returned my own body, she's like, Ninus. I'm I don't know what you're talking about. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, and then we get uh, 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 some kind of ending dialogue as we're coming towards the end. What is it that separates machines from androids like us? The machines have gained emotions, consciousness. The final screams they summoned on the edge of death, they still echo within me. Mm, yeah. And so this is the end. Now, it's, it's really, really interesting and a really clever choice, I feel like, to have 9S, who was the one denying the whole time that the machines say anything that has any meaning, that they're alive, that they have emotions, that they can think or be conscious at all. He's the one who ends up in the machine network. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a cruel fate. <laughs> and, oh. and realizing what yeah. it really is, what their life experience really is, right. having like firsthand experience, knowing what it is hmm. to be a machine. He's part of their network now. So he, he went and touched hands with the people on the other side. <laughs> right, right. Of in the, India. Yeah. Of the Coke machine. The Coke machine. Right? So this yeah, is we kind of what we've been, we've, we've been talking about. The whole, <laughs> we've been talking about this the whole time, right? Like if you, yeah. if you have all this fear of these others, you know, it doesn't matter what group it falls into. You know, everybody has, it, it, like we said, it goes down to as silly as being X bots and Sony ponies and console war stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And uh, the point is that as, as you continue to other them and you don't like go actually get to know people of this right. other group. To uh, walk in their shoes. Walk in their shoes, so to speak. Understand or, them, yeah. right? Um, like 9S is forced to do, but hey. You're, you're going to find out they're really a lot more similar than yeah. you think. And that was kind of the whole exercise with that, uh, you know, marketing stunt that Coca-Cola did. But I, I just find it poetic that 9S gets to yeah. have that experience by actually being alive inside of the machine right. network and it, it seems like kind of a huge revelation to then have credits roll <laughs> and be like wait a minute what but because i thought, like we said yeah. this is not really the end of the game no it is not it's not but the ending a is called flowers for machines and the a and machines with the a is capitalized capitalized ending a, um flowers for machines now the a flowers for a right mm. did you ever read the book flowers for algernon back in high no, school or middle school. Mm -mm. So Flowers for Algernon is about kind of a, okay, so there's a mouse that is experimented on. There's these scientists. It was written like 50, 60 years ago. There's these scientists that were able to increase the IQ of a mouse, this little like, lab mouse, lab mm. rat, uh, and they were able to get it to like become, well, I don't know if IQ is the right word, but they were able to get it to do um, incredibly intelligent things, right? That mice are not supposed to be able to do. And they determined, hey, we finally figured this out. We know how to um, boost intelligence, basically. And so they begin to want to move from mice to experimenting on people. Well, the uncle of one of the researchers there, his son works at that lab um, and, or his nephew, I think it's his nephew works at the lab. Um, and he's like a janitor, you know, his IQ is like 67 or something like that. Really? Oh, I know this. Do you know there's this a story? movie? There's a movie oh, based I've on, the, on the book. Okay. And I've seen parts Ooh, of the movie. Okay. Ooh, so I, I, know. I know exactly what this story is. Okay. Yeah. So basically they decide, Hey, let's give this person the gene treatment. Yeah. And so within a day or two, this person, um, his IQ increases like three times. Yeah. So ends up with like a 200 IQ, something yeah. like that. Um, and begins to like 
just go crazy with like all the possibilities that come with achieving a high intellect, right? Mm-hmm. With having a high intellect begins to run his own experiments and, uh, you know, do this and that. But, um, as he is at that level, the mouse dies, mm-hmm. dies way earlier than was supposed to. And they realize that the mouse had been kind of degrading for a while and that this is temporary. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this whole IQ boost is not permanent. Uh, but they've already kind of moved it onto this person, right? So he he spends the next like two or three weeks like trying to fix it, trying to figure out what went wrong and why the mouse reverted back to what it was. When the mouse reverted back to what it was, it died very quickly. Mm-hmm. And at least in part, it's because the mouse knew what it was like. Yeah. The mouse still had the memories of being highly intelligent, but going back, having to revert back revert to live back. the mundane life of a, of a mouse after being you know, a lot smarter, um, was uninteresting and yeah. life lost its meaning. And so, um, this, uh, character and Algernon's the name, the name of the mouse. I can't remember the character's name. Um, but basically he's not able to fix this. So his yeah. IQ slowly reverts back to, right. um, 67 or whatever yep. it was. Yep. And he just like leaves a note on the desk saying, Hey, two things. First off, I'm leaving. Second off, uh, go put some flowers on Algernon's grave, right? Yeah. Really good stuff. But uh, basically that's the end of it. And th- I think the implication is that he killed himself, right? Mm. So it's like, I, I think, I don't know. I'm trying to think of exactly how that applies here. I Like I wrote it down. Yeah. <clears throat> flowers for Algernon. I think that's what it's referring to when it says flowers for machines with the A yeah. capitalized. Um, but it's something about like gaining insight into something and then but then it. and then having to deal with the futility of a meaningless life after knowing the truth i guess yeah, something like yeah. that. i mean that that's probably it i think that's and then and then just really like good. deciding whether or not life is even worth it at that point mm. really difficult in my opinion kind of like a story really difficult kind of just thought experiment just to think about um but i think that's more or less what it's probably saying here and i'm guessing every ending will have a different yeah. subtitle right yeah it will Okay. For sure. That's really interesting. I didn't even make that connection. I had actually forgotten that I had seen that movie at all. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty good. It's um, a cool story. So. Okay. okay. A couple other notes real quick. Okay. Or unless do you have anything. No, I, I have nothing else. Okay. So the last notes I want to bring this. Um, for Adam, thinking and philosophizing too much leads to death. For Eve, feeling too much leads to death. Oh, right? yep. So it's like, what does it mean to live? Well, to not succumb to either side completely to stay in the middle, right? The Buddhist, the, uh, or the straight and narrow, right? (laughs) Or the Buddhist idea of the middle path, the middle way Mm -hmm. or the yin and yang, the line, you know, the curved line, um, that that's too much to either side. It's just death. Right. And the meaning of life is to be found like in that thin, like middle part. Yeah. Um, then I've got two B looking upwards and declaring it is finished after Mm. she kills Eve. Yep. And I'm, that's, I think, well, I don't know if it's the last words Christ said. Either Christ said, either Christ's last words were "It is finished," or his last words were "Into thy arms I come into my spirit." Yeah. But I can't remember which one came before the other. Um, I but think either it, way, I think it's "It is finished." It is last. finished, yeah. right? And yeah. that's his last words. Anyways, yeah. that's to be basically after killing Eve, um, says, looks up and declares, "It is finished." Um, Finally, very her, her great burden, right? Yep. Uh, although little does she know, there's nope, uh, there's, a there's more. <laughs> um, I think uh, I think that that is it. This yeah. is it, man. Ooh. That's it for uh, ending A. Yeah, play really good, really play. good. And my guess is it. that the game just keeps getting better. It's it's fantastic. After this. I'm I'm having a blast with it. Um, Me on too. This playthrough. So again, um, uh, we're often way too ambitious in terms of how far we think we can get <laughs> with things. But um, I would say playthrough ending B. It might be kind of a lot, but it's not going to take as long. As it did, I, I did this in about four and a half hours. Okay, okay. Played through to ending nice. A. Um, so I, I would think B might be half or a okay, little, a little over less. half of that. Cool. And then the rest of the game after that. Uh, Each ending would be like shorter and shorter maybe. I don't know if that's true. Yeah, it will depend. Well, I don't want to say anything. Just okay, that's spoilers, fine. That's fine. But okay. point is, play right. ending B. We're going to try to cover that all in the next episode. But if not, it'll be two at the most. It won't be more than that. So, Hold Mike to his words. Hold, hold me to it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you guys again next week. Peace out.